I was on a movie set this morning and mm. it's the new Tom Brady movie, 80 for Brady, right. that he is producing and starring in. And a certain someone is in that movie, a certain actress named Sally Field, who is amazing, right? One of my favorite actresses of all time. So because the movie is about these, these friends, these, this group of women who love Tom Brady and they're going to see him in the Super Bowl, and they're, so they take a road trip to see him in the Super Bowl, um, we talked a lot about like sports. And so I asked Sally Field who her favorite athlete of all time is. And who do you think she said? Tom Brady. Magic Johnson. No, Shaquille O'Neal. Sally Field knows who I am? Yes. She she said Shaquille and Kobe are her favorite athletes of all time. She talked about she started going to the games at the forum. She would take her sons to the games, and she fell in love with the two of you, followed you all to Staples Center, and you're her favorite athletes of all time. Jane Fonda said Magic Johnson. But Sally Field says Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille, how does it feel when you hear like a legend like Sally Field say you're her favorite of all time? I'm honored. You know, I always took pride. When I played in L.A., I tried to do the same for them as they did for me. Mm-hmm. Like I, I used to like, like sometimes, of course, you're supposed to be focused on the game, but you be like, bro, is that, is that Jack Nicholson? You can't handle the truth. Wow. Oh, hey, mm-hmm. is that like is that Tom Cruise? I'm like they coming to watch me play, so I have to do what they do for me. When I'm at home and I'm trying to get away from basketball, a good movie will do that for you. I'm honored that she even knows who I am. She definitely does. You know what she also said today? She said, um, "I love Shaq and Kobe so much. They're my favorite athletes of all time, and um, we had a lot of pain this season." That's what she said, meaning the yeah, Lakers. We did. She was hurt because she's a big fan of the Lakers. She loves the Lakers. So she was really hurt about what this season has brought about, like I'm sure so many Laker fans have. Frank Vogel, out. Did you see this one coming, Shaquille, or did you think he would survive? I thought they would give him another chance. It's really not his fault. You have to look at the people that put the team together. We all got faked out. We're so enamored with names and, ooh, so like LeBron, we, they're bringing in Russ. First thing everybody did was, ooh, we're bringing in Carmelo. Mm-hmm. Hey, Carmelo still got two years left. Ooh, AD's going to be there. Ooh, Dwight House coming back. Ooh, and Charles was the only one that saw it. They're too old, man. They're too old. Mm-hmm. I'm like, forget all that. But they, they played like they were old. Injuries, didn't play together. Russ didn't have a great year. It never really clicked. And in places like L.A. and New York, it has to click or else. Like when you got Mm -hmm. big name, so this is a debate, four or five Hall of Famers on the team, you got to make the playoffs. You got to. If you got four, you got Mm -hmm. three top 75 and four or five Hall of Famers on that team, you got to make the playoffs. Every team don't have even even two Hall of Famers and and we got five and we can't even make the playoffs. But listen, he's going to get blamed. Rob Palenka and them going to run and hide. I don't know who's in charge up there and I don't know who's going to take that job because now you need to revamp the roster. You know, you need to get you need to be, to be LeBron, AD, and three young guys. That's it. LeBron, AD, and three young guys. So um, Adrian Wojnarowski tweeted out, like, on Saturday night late, I think it was, um, that Frank Vogel was going to get fired. Frank Vogel was asked about it. He said, I ain't heard S-H-I-T. But then, of course, he At did At the get press fired. conference, right? <laughs> and, yeah. Exactly. So do you like the way that was handled or do you think he, he was done a little dirty? Yeah, he was done dirty because that's how I heard that's how I heard I was getting traded. Really? That's yeah. crazy, dog. Yeah. I was I'm I'm eating cereal with Sharif, getting planning our vacation and oh, the Lakers would be taking trades for Shaquille. I'm like, damn, I can't even get a call. That's all I did. Three in a row and boom, bam, bam y'all, y- y'all can't call me and tell me. So what I did was I got in my car and went to the office. They knew I was coming. The police was waiting for me. Like, Shad, man, we can't. No, they was. They, they were like, Shad, we can't let you. I was like, no, they just told me I'd trade me. I'm just going to go get my shit. Like, nah, man, they're going to send it to you. They're not going to let you. I mean, because I was going in there to put my hands on Mitch Kupchak. Because my thing is the, the disrespect. <laughs> I understand the business, but let's talk business. Hey, Shaq, it ain't working. We want to do some different things. We think about trading you. Cool. This is where I want to go. I want to go to Miami. 
don't you know don't after all I did have to you know have me here from the media oh, bro, at least give me seriously. the respect man seriously this True man story. said he was I, about to go touch up Mick Kupchak. I listen, forgot about I Mitch saw, Kupchak. Oh my listen, God, I forgot about him. I saw it at 10 o'clock. I was in my car at 10.04. I was in my car. I was like, I'll be back. And I got on You left that baby eating cereal, sitting there I by sure himself? I sure did. I, I sure did. <laughs> and I was gone. Yeah. And I got to that damn beach so fast. The cops were like, hey, Shaq. They told me that you might be coming. That's crazy, dog. <laughs> <laughs> 